It's the time of year when our daydreams turn to dollars. That's right, millions of Americans have begun dreaming of that big fat refund from their tax returns. Washington Full Circle starts right now. Hello and welcome to Washington Full Circle. I'm Furman Patterson here with Matthew Granado. Faster, bigger, easier. Those are the words most often associated with tax refunds. From individual income to property taxes. We've got some tips on how to navigate through tax season with less stress. Plus, seniors who own their own homes have some good news this tax season. How to keep more of their money in their pockets. Robert McKeon from the D.C. Office of Tax and Revenue is here to help us. Robert, thanks so much for joining us and being here with us today. You know, this is the time of year that's unofficially known as tax season now up until April. Uh, just first, what, what is the best time to start your taxes from your suggestion? Well, for personal income taxes, I think the, the best time to start is the soon, as soon as you start to accumulate all your documents that you need for filing. Um, you should uh, not wait to the last minute, not wait till uh, April 15th when everything's due and then, and then you run into a potentially a late filing issue. Uh, what you need to do right now is start planning ahead, um, con consulting a tax advisor, assembling your, your materials and, and getting prepared to file. Now I know there's, there's uh, uh, tax preparers, there's uh, electronic tax filing, but there's still your office that helps people um, during tax season. Tell us what you offer. Um, yes, our customer service administration is prepared to help uh, taxpayers uh, with their returns and advise them, um, you know, give them uh, guidance on completing the forms. Uh, we ask that they bring in their federal form 1040 already completed with W-2s and other, uh, other informational uh, items that are necessary to complete the uh, the form. Is this free or is there a charge for this? No, it's free. Um, they just need to either come in to our office at 1101 4th Street Southwest, which is at the Waterfront Metro, or they can um, call our customer service uh, telephone line. That's 727-4829, uh, also known as 4TAX. So 727-4829. Okay. Yes. Is, is that uh, help what you were saying before starting earlier is better? It's probably a <laughs> A little bit of a log jam when the deadline draws near for any help that you guys can give out, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. That, that's a very good point. Um, the 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 sooner, the, I mean, the 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 closer we get to April fifteenth, one can only expect that there's going to be more and more people calling the customer service line. And of course, you know, we we operate. We have uh, a limited number of employees, but we do our best with the employees we have to help everybody. And uh, mm -hmm. so, the sooner that one can start, the better. I would, would like to note that in March, we will be out in the commun community every Wednesday from 4 to 8 p.m. So uh, to assist taxpayers in, in, in completing their tax returns. So the taxpayers should consult our website uh, to find out when those times are going to be. Now, now, the big news is that there's some new programs, especially for seniors, uh, having to do with property taxes. Tell us about that. Right. There have been a lot of developments with uh, property taxes related to seniors. Mm -hmm. One thing I can always uh, have to stress to seniors is that they should uh, verify that they are receiving the senior citizen tax relief. The senior citizen tax relief, it, they, you apply for it on our form FP100. Uh, you apply for that and the homestead at the same time. It's a unified form, all on the same form. Um, what the senior citizen tax relief does is it cuts the tax bill in half. It's one of the most generous programs in probably in the union for uh, seniors. So it's very important that, that, that seniors verify that they have, uh, that they are receiving this, this important tax relief. And that's new for the 2014 tax year? Well, no, that's been going on for, for a bit now, but mm -hmm. you'd be surprised how many seniors actually are not aware of the program. Wow. So we, we are out in the community. We've been going to community meetings and, and, and uh, stressing the importance of, of filing, uh, filing for this tax relief. Um, they can call our hotline, 727-4829, uh, mm -hmm. speak with a customer service representative to verify that they, they are getting the senior citizen tax relief. Um, and again, you have, to be six, well, you have to be 65 years of age or older, um, you have to be domiciled in the district, and you have to own your property at least 50% owner. So you can own it with your wife or your, your spouse, whatever. Um, 
so it's important to apply for that. Um, and then you get the homestead deduction. The homestead deduction now reduces your uh, taxable assessment by, I'm sorry for my voice, I kind of got a little bit of the flu, but uh, the homestead deduction reduces your taxable assessment by uh, $71,400. So that's taken right off the top mm -hmm. uh, before any taxes are applied. And then the senior deduction takes that net difference and cuts it in half. So it's very important and, and associated w with those two programs, the senior citizen tax relief and the homestead deduction is the, the, uh, the tax cap. Mm -hmm. And the tax cap uh, restricts any tax increase to no more than 10% a year. So it's, it's very beneficial. Uh, we also have, uh, for the income tax filers, we have a program called Schedule H. Uh, Schedule H is a standalone tax form. You can file it with your D40 income taxes for the district or separately on its own. Um, it's a refundable credit of up to $1,000 uh, for, um, uh, for people who either own their homes or rent. So you don't also have to be an owner. You can well, be a renter. Also. Okay. Right. And um, new for this year is that if you're 65 years of age or older um, and you have house, you have a uh, uh, tax filing unit income of uh, 60,000 or less, mm -hmm. you can um, you can get uh, apply for this program. So before the you know the normal threshold is 40,000 and less to, to be able to apply for the program. But but for seniors 70 age of old 70 age uh, 70 years of age or older now they can apply. Um, if they have income of 60000 or less. Now, all of these programs that you mentioned, um, are these items that you need to reapply for every year when you file your taxes, or if you apply for it and you receive it once, does that stay with you or your status year after year? Very good point. The, the, the real property tax programs, like the senior citizen tax relief, mm -hmm. the um, homestead deduction, and the tax gap, th those are, um, once you apply, you have it until the end. Mm -hmm. Um, until you either uh, move or you know you you ask for us to take it away. Um, for Schedule H, one must apply every year. Okay. So there's this form, and again, you, you don't have to. For Schedule H, it's important to note that even though you don't have an income tax obligation, say you don't have to file the D40, um, that's fine. You you still should file your Schedule H and get and claim your credit. Excellent. You know? Excellent. Okay, well, there's lots more information available on your website, so the big news is to get started now, right? Yes, and oh, if I could just add one more. Um, the tax deferral, senior citizen tax deferral, that's new for this year. It's very, um, it's had a lot of, uh, it's gotten a lot of press. Um, it's not an exemption. A lot of people are confused out there that it's an exemption. No, it's, it's a deferral. So these taxes that you defer um, will come due. Um, to be eligible to apply for the deferral, as again, it's a one-time one uh, application, you can defer your real property taxes, not income, just real property. You can defer them um, for as long as you live in the property. You just have to have household income of less than $50,000. Um, if you're 75 years of, of age or older and you've owned a property in the district for the past 25 years, you can defer at 0% interest. So it's a free loan. Wow. Um, but if you're 65 years of age or older and have less than 50,000 uh, household income, then you can apply, and it's a 6%. Uh, that's the, the the interest rate is 6%. So it's a Excellent. it's a default. Excellent. That's great news. Thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Uh, it spills, chills, and spins as local youngsters hit the ice to learn a new way of mixing fun and fitness. Don't go away, Washington. Full circle. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Washington Full Circle. Facing the big chill is a good thing for some DC youth as they learn to master one of the coolest sports. A district program called Kids on Ice is introducing urban kids to a new way of exercising while also shattering some athletic stereotypes. Joining us is Ty Newberry, executive director of the Fort DuPont Ice Arena 
and Brittany Green, an alumnus of the Kids on Ice program. Thanks to you both for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us out. Thanks. Now, for the folks that haven't been to uh, Fort DuPont, is it a regulation size ice ring? How does it compare? We are the only full-size indoor ice rink in Washington, D.C. that's open to the public. So we are tucked in Ward 7, just off of Eli Place and Minnesota Avenue. And if you want to play hockey or speed skate or figure skate, we're really the only venue that can hold that to the public. Now, Kids on Ice uh, is one of your programs, one of many programs there, uh, and Ms. Green was part of that. Tell us what Kids on Ice is all about. So Kids on Ice is all about getting kids exposure to programs and while doing that the services are free. So the students come and they have lessons and they're taught how to skate while also providing materials. So the students get skates, they get dresses, they get hockey equipment and all of that is done with coaches and volunteers that come to help the children skate. And the coaches and volunteers they are usually alumnus of, of different programs that you've had there you said? For the most part, you'll have students that have gone through the program, like myself. Mm -hmm. um, you'll also have adults that just love to skate or that mm -hmm. have skated in their past. So it's kind of a combination of the two, but for the most part, I would say definitely alumni of the program who just want to give back. Oh, great. Yeah. Now, you've been uh, in the news lately, Fort DuPont, uh, in the media. I, I believe it's Fox and, and uh, some others. What was that all about? Well, we have a, a lot going on right now. Uh, very recently, we received a grant through U.S. Figure Skating. In addition, with Prudential, they partnered up, and uh, we were awarded a big check at their national figure skating That's competition, nice. which was <laughs> a lot of fun. Uh, and one of the things that the checks allowed us to do is take a couple of our synchronized skating teams out of the area this weekend. We'll be going up to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and competing in our first competition away from the rink. Excellent. So it's very exciting. In addition, we're also working with the city and DPR and DGS. Uh, we are going to be expanding our rink and adding, uh, taking it from a one-sheet facility to a two-sheet facility in the next couple of years, which will allow us to increase our programming and make a deeper impact on our kids. Now, uh, other than training, uh, learning how to uh, ice skate, learning how to play ice hockey and things like that, for folks that just want to come and use the skating rink to to skate, uh, what are the prices generally for rental? Do you offer rental there? We offer rental skates and admission, and usually for adults it's about $8 if you need skates and, and to pay admission and a little cheaper for kids and seniors. Uh, we do have some public skate times. They do vary. One of the things that the nonprofit who runs the rink is, is our goal is to get kids into our programs. Mm -hmm. So we focus more on programming for people to come participate in our program uh, we do offer some general public skates during the week where you can just come and participate, but our, our focus and our goal is to get kids in the program, get them into USA Hockey, US Speed Skating, US Figure Skating, and start hitting some benchmarks and make it more of a program than just a visit. Tell us about what, uh, I mean, what's, what's one of the most popular programs, most well-attended programs that you offer there, and something maybe new that you're working on or something you'd like to tell us about. Uh, actually, all our programs right now are pretty much at capacity. Really? Our Learn wow. to Skate is uh, at capacity. We have a waiting list for that right now. Our synchronized skating and our figure skating teams and numbers are all doing really, really well. Our hockey is at capacity and our speed skating is at capacity. One thing we also provide is a school skate for fitness program where we work with local uh, schools, public schools and public charter schools and they're allowed to bring their students down and we fulfill a, a phys ed requirement for them. Oh, wow. So that's the area right now where we're getting a lot of traction also and trying to continue to build that program out. Now the thing is, why is there so much interest in, in skating? Um, you know, fill to capacity, that's, that seems unusual. Yes, uh, it's, it's a really kind of a unique, unique <laughs> thing, especially in the D.C. area. And especially with our programs, we try to focus hard on Ward 7 and Ward 8. Mm -hmm. And we're in Ward 7, and we don't discriminate against anybody in the city, but that's where our focus is. And we're one of the few areas where we actually have 60% of our participants are female. Um, yeah. So young ladies and young girls in the Ward yeah. 7, <laughs> Ward 8 area, you know, it's... It's cool to hang out on the basketball <laughs> courts until you're about eight or nine right. years old. And then when you come to the ice rink for girls, you know, we, we provide a little of everything. If you right. want to go fast, if you like track, and you want to be on the edge, we have speed skating right. for you. 
Uh, if you want to put on a pretty dress and skate to <laughs> beautiful music and be a soloist and be, have the camera be on you, you have the opportunity to do that. And if you want to uh, be kind of anonymous and go out there and be a little aggressive and be part of a team, you can play hockey. So we really kind of fit a lot of different personalities for kids out there. Wow, wow that's great. And if you just stick with us right here, don't go away. We'll be right back with more Washington Full Circle right after this. Welcome back. We're talking about kids on ice and the Fort DuPont Ice Arena. Now, Brittany, I want to ask you, what drove you to dip your toe in the ice the very first time? Well, my parents really stressed the importance of trying things that you've never done before. So my parents really wanted me to get into ice skating. And when I came to Fort DuPont, I initially started off as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And I was just helping out with school groups that came and teaching them how to skate. And eventually, I went through the program and I did the different lessons and then from there I became an instructor to give back and help this people go through the program. So now, now what do what do what does the Fort DuPont provide to young girls that want to come and learn? What walk us through it. So Fort DuPont has a lot of options. You can do the synchronized skating team which is skating with a bunch of girls. They also have figure skating so that is individual, that's more so focused on you. And I ha there are a lot of girls that also do the hockey team. So there's a wide variety as well as speed skating. So we definitely have um, a nice variety of different winter sports that you can do at Fort DuPont. Wow. And you said you started uh, when you first went to Fort DuPont volunteering. So had you been ice skating in your life prior to that? Did you know how to ice skate? Had you had any experience doing it? Or was that sort of your first experience even ice skating? I had. Mm -hmm. I had an experience ice okay. skating before at a different ice rink and then I also while I was volunteering I was going through the program. So I did the kids on ice program with them and that's how I I guess got more skills skating. Um, and then the first friends that I made in college actually were on the ice skating team. So I've done ice skating my whole life. Oh wow. Okay so if, uh, if young girls come to Fort DuPont or young men mm -hmm. uh, what do they have to bring in and what's provided there that they can get? Well, first thing they need to do is register. We right. get our registrations. We're starting our summer camp registration programs now, and then we'll start with our fall programming. Uh, once they get in the course, pretty much everything is covered for them and subsidized for them one way or the other. We're a nonprofit, so we rely on a lot of donations and grants and things like that. But we will provide rental skates, and then once they get in well enough skating and comfortable skating, and want to go into one of our Kids on Ice Plus programs that we call Positive Living Using Skating, mm -hmm. uh, which is the hockey right. speed skating and figure skating. Then we will provide them uh, equipment that is their own that mm -hmm. they can keep. We work with local clubs to donate Equipment things. like what? Uh, if you're figure skating, dresses, tights, and skates. Uh, if you're playing hockey, all the equipment from head to toe, including stick. And in speed skating, once you get to a certain level, we'll provide you with uh, the speed skates and the helmet, the things that are necessary to compete. So there is no cost barrier to participate in sports that in other ranks are <laughs> rather expensive. Uh, we're, we're kind of a novelty in the uh, industry that we provide this for free. When you were talking about uh, you know, hockey and, and learning the skills is one of the programs, um, is it just building the skills and learning the fundamentals or do you ever get the chance to uh, have scrimmages, maybe competitive opportunities for, uh, for games, things like this, or is it, is it just building fundamentals uh, at, the, at the starting point? Recently it's been building fundamentals, yeah. uh, but our, our programs are growing up, yeah. so to speak, um, and we're trying to get ready for the expansion of a second sheet of ice here. Mm -hmm. So as I, I mentioned earlier, we're taking our synchronized skating teams for the first time outside the area. Mm -hmm. We're going to Hershey for a competition this weekend. Uh, we're also, there's some smaller competitions for the, the basic skills kids to be able to compete. Um, the hockey partners up with Hockey in Harlem and every other year we do a little bit of a friendly e exhibition with them. Uh, and then our speed skating, we've had some kids compete in competitions in Cleveland and Massachusetts, some at the national level. And we've had one individual, O'Connor Anderson, who's a, a local DC kid here who competed at the World Special Olympic Games. 
So wow. we've, we've done a lot and been able, and then in addition, uh, this past summer, we took a few of our kids from the DC area on exchange to Israel with their hockey program. Wow. So we're getting kids out of uh, the Ward 7, Ward 8 in Washington, D.C. area and trying to get them as much exposure to other areas and programs as we can. For these kids in Ward uh, Ward 7 and 8, uh, and you get to see them progress. Mm -hmm. uh, how long does it generally take to go from wobbly knees and ankles <laughs> to being able to glide on the ice? Uh, usually within the first couple lessons. Really? Uh, yes. The, the fun part is, I, I won't lie, being kids. There's nothing better than <laughs> sliding on the ice and seeing as far as you can, yeah, how far you can go. Right. But uh, you mean sliding upright or sliding on your seat? Sliding <laughs> on your seat, almost like sliding across the ice. You know, that's that's what kids like to do. So, uh, but usually within the first couple of uh, lessons, they're they're good. They're able to stand, march in place, and dip. And we follow the U.S. Figure Skating curriculum on that sort of uh, progression stages. Wow. Now, uh, is there music during the, the skating, the general skating, or during the lessons, or is it? During public skating, we do have music. Yeah. Uh, and then during our, our figure skating and our synchronized skating, we do use some music for that also. Wow. Now, you also have partners uh, in the city. Lots of people seem to be interested from mm -hmm. the Washington Capitals yep. to uh, partners in business. Yes, we're, we're very blessed being a nonprofit. The Washington Capitals have been a great partner, as has the NHL. Uh, just on Monday, we had Joel Ward and uh, Brooks Orpik and Matt Latta came out and skated with our kids. So it was a great Excellent. opportunity for them That's to great. be able to have some wow. exposure and contact with some yeah. NHL players too. Terrific. I'll have to come over. Thank you yes, both for <laughs> stopping by. I appreciate it. We have skates your size. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for today. Thanks to our guests for joining us and thanks to you at home for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.